Before the show begins, we offer our condolences to the families and friends of Corporal Nathan Cirillo and Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, who were recently killed this previous month by acts of terrorism. You both meant great to our country, and may you rest in peace. Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation! Where the World Wide Web and real life world collide, and brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your hosts from the depths, The Thang, and JBJ Blaze! And welcome back to another Blazon Nation episode. This one is number 8 episode. 18 recorded on Halloween, October the 31st, 2014, and we're just lucky to get this one in because we, we've pretty much gone into weekly shows now, not weekly, monthly, sorry, due to basically just the amount of time that even I have for running the show and sorts, so... Hopefully we can get this all done tonight, and if it's a must, I'll get the video out maybe later this weekend or so. But anyway, how's things with you, Thang? Things are going fine. There's a lot of stuff that happened this month. Um, I've been playing a lot of recent games like Alien Isolation, Borderlands pre-sequel, The Evil Within... Um, recently that a patch came out for that, so you can play it at 60 frames per second. Glorious. Uh, I played a child, childish, well, not really childish, but a, a really nice game for my past. Uh, Fetty Bear's Birthday Surprise. If you haven't played that and you were born in the 90s, then you're missing out. Uh, other things going on, there's, there's a Halloween sale right now on Steam. It ends November 3rd, so if anybody is listening to this after that date, you probably missed out. There is also a weird person who added me on my profile. They thought I was probably a girl, but I'll just leave that to your imaginations. <laughs> um, Work-related, I found a bad person who showed up in April. They tried to apply to a hospital, and I found them. Also, another update, I found somebody else who tried to apply at a hospital, but they were excluded all the way back in November 2011, so that's pretty awesome. As for social news, uh, if you haven't, if, if you don't know who Mar Markiplier is, he's a guy on YouTube who does montages, let's plays, lots of stuff with other different YouTubers, and he's awesome and hilarious. He just recently hit four four million subscribers, so you should go check him that out. Him. There's also Storby, who is his. Um, he also does let's plays of scary games, mostly simulators. He got an Oculus Rift, and he's been playing a few games with that. And also, in Hall it's Halloween, and so far I think I've only seen about six or seven groups. One group had a, had a number of 12 people, which was kind of crazy. So, happy Halloween. And lastly, in life, I turned 23 years old on the 14th of October. I got a volleyball, and I got some wonderful money, which is awesome. I also watched Prometheus on the 14th, which was a really good movie. It ties into the Alien franchise. Totally check that out. And in other news, Christmas arrives in less than two months. So I started making an Amazon wish list. Hopefully I'll get something really nice. I'm looking forward to getting a microphone stand with wired or wireless headset with a pop and filter so I can record stuff. Anyway, that's my life. How about you, Blaze? Well, that's what I was going to do the sidewalk talk thing for. <laughs> Sidewalk talk, talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk, yeah. Alright, so recently, um, and actually this was a few podcasts ago, and if you hear some sort of Windows-like ding, I apologize for that. I don't know why XSplit is being so rude like that tonight, but anyway, weeks back... I looked up the pronunciation of Blazon, and it turns out it's actually Blazon. And I have a friend, Merkaraz, who 
keeps on calling it Blaze a Nation, and I'm thinking, not really it's Blaze on Nation, but turns out Blaze in is how the word is actually pronounced, but for the sake of the show, it's Blaze on. But anyway, my month's been filled with trying to keep up with my YouTube channel stuff, trying to keep up with indie gamers, doing... Trying to finish up this review article for them, which I've been just putting off far too much. And having school and doing co-op, of which way tomorrow morning I get to attend my first ever hockey game. But that's only because we're doing a shoot there. And it turns out that it's going to be a live one, so that'll be... Definitely interesting. And then, also, hopefully we can get through this thing tonight. So that I can again get all the stuff worked on and released. So that we can still consider this an October episode. Rather than calling this month or whatever. Um... The Octoberless sort of thing. Octoberless without a podcast, whatever you want to call that. And yeah, so this is pretty much our only chance for that. And we tried quite a bit ago on Hitbox, and the, the audio just seems a bit choppy, and it even seemed so on Twitch just a little bit. And even one of our viewers in chat is having some difficulty watching the video, so I'm not exactly sure what the devil is still going on, whether it's my internet connection, even though with Kojiko we have pretty good speeds and all, despite having the most terrible thing ever that you could ever be offered by your ISP, which is called an internet transfer cap. Most awful thing on earth is that you gotta watch what you download and upload with the internet because not necessarily it'll have you in prison but it'll have you paying more than what you should be to your ISP if you hadn't gone over your limit which just is bothersome and I'm still waiting for the day that Kojiko A gets an unlimited well gets unlimited packages for their lesser priced plans or the day that I figure out that pretty much the how much we pay for our T V and for our cable and internet wouldn't change dramatically if we'd switch and that's Skype being a total jerk as well. Alright, so well, one of the things I wanted to say is this will be the first ever episode of Blaze on Nation done while I am in adulthood because more than a month ago I turned 18. But even more so, Happy Birthday to Thang! Happy Birthday to Thang! We already know your age, but <laughs> it's so fun to sing the song. And even though this is meant to be an opinionated podcast, why the heck not? How's that for a rhyme? That's fine, but you gotta re remind yourself that Happy Birthday is copyrighted. I don't give don't a wanna, crap. You don't want to get <laughs> muted. <laughs> that, that, that's what they came up with on the Shaft, and I'm thinking, big deal uh. if the birthday song is copyrighted. I mean, everybody sings that song. What the heck is... Uh, and I mean, it should be public domain. It's like the Hallelujah song. For crying out loud. Everybody sings that song. 
True. Or even Christmas carols. They're all open domain. What the heck is happy birthday not open domain? That is ridiculous. Beyond yeah, ridiculous. it kind of is. Yeah. But anyway, before my train of thought is completely gone, I'd like to get to this. If XSplit will be nice to me. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright, so on the rundown, we have the recent high school shooting in Marisville, Pilchuck. We have paranautical activity being removed from Steam after the de developer issuing a death threat upon Gabe Newell. And then the next one involves... Uh, Gamergate, which basically is a summary of what has been going on with that group, what do the members want, what's wrong with it, how it's answering its critics, and is it a vast, complex, and diverse community. And then we have another response um, about Gamergate by an NFL player and a person who has been gaming for 26 years. And that should be interesting to read considering it's not safe for work. It, so if you're somehow... Yeah, it's yeah. very explicit. He drops the F-bomb a lot. But, I mean, after reading that article, I will say this before we get to the details, that it is so far the only thing that's actually told me what I need to know about Gamergate, which, that, which is basically that it's to do with misogyny, well, it is misogyny in the video game industry in that basically harassing female members of the video game industry, whether it's journalism, game development, or what have you. But anyway, we can all get to this in the next thing that we like to spread around, which are... Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so... So, this article um, talks about uh, the game Paranautical Activity, which is a first-person shooter kind of... Well, I would say it's perfect for, for Halloween, because it's, it's all blocky like Minecraft, and there are bats and stuff in it like that. Um, it was recently pulled off Steam on the 21st, after the developer threatened Gabe Newell on Twitter, and I quote, I am going to kill Gabe Newell. He is going to die, unquote. And people really took this very seriously because, well, obviously this is a death threat over Twitter, and maybe he had some sort of a mental breakdown when he said that. I don't know. But this resulted in the game being completely removed off Steam it was available to retail, other retail uh, websites, but they're probably gone too. And there was an update saying that the person who tweeted this, who goes by the name Mike Murderbeck, oh god, I don't, I don't like that last name. It's probably Malbeck, but he makes it his, his last name's that. He said he's stepping down from the company and quote has sold his interest in, in it to a fellow developer, Travis Fenning. Like I said, the internet is out there, and a lot of things that are said that could be, that are supposed to be taken as a joke, could be taken seriously, because it's so subtle to try and point out the what exactly, what um, inflection the word is trying to say. Is it serious? Is it sarcastic? We don't, that obviously was not that obvious, and they took it as a threat and they took action kind of like what the person did on a plane which required people with hazmat suits to come out and escort the guy off the plane because he said a joke about the Ebola virus so oh, yeah. I mean I guess you have to I guess there's a borderline between the First Amendment freedom of speech and going over the line, and this guy obviously went over the line. And I, I definitely agree with this happening, because, I mean, he's in a professional position. And that, 
like many other companies, and actually that's even far worse than other people have gotten with PR. And I mean, I, I think even Phil Fish has possibly made death threats, or at least one to, I think, Marcus Spear, but no one took him seriously. But when it came to this guy, he constant, he made frequent tweets in rage about Steam and Paranautical activity, and then he finally concluded that he was going to kill Gabe Newell, but then the deal breaker, I think, was he is going to die. So he didn't just say, I'm going to kill him, he said, he is going to die. And I mean, in my French class, we learned that the whole will versus going to are sort of different in the way that going to seems more like a seems more certain than will and I mean once you add that extra line to that assuring or well not assuring because we all know now that he wasn't serious about it but the way he put it I mean, first off, you're saying you're going to kill him, but now you're making it seem more certain that you're so willing to do so. And, of course, again, you're at a professional position, and Steam is helping you out by distributing your game and selling your game for profit and you're gonna crap on them I mean contact them about the issue and be respectful about it but going on a huge tirade on Twitter and making a death threat and the extra part to the death threat that is hugely irresponsible and I wouldn't mind seeing Paranautical Activity coming back to Steam, but it's definitely well deserved for the developer. Because that, like many people who say crap about diseases on YouTube, that is bloody immature. Yeah, I agree. So is that all for that one? <laughs> yep, basically just watch what you say. Make sure that if you're going to post a joke, make it very very obvious because some people might take it the wrong way and therefore you could get into trouble somebody could get hurt and it'll just cost so much money just 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 don't be stupid and think I, of the consequences before your actions and you'll be just fine yeah and i guess that even kind of goes back to the justin carter stuff he at least indicated in the end of his comment jk lol there was no indication of sarcasm in his tweet in a way one might be able to argue that he could be lucky that there weren't that there wasn't anything about charges being placed but then again in a way they'd also have to investigate whether there was any true intent and I mean, a person's angry, yes, they are going to say stupid things, or things that they wouldn't say if they were not so overwhelmed, but I mean, to post that, keep, in your, keep, keep your thoughts in your head, people. Like, yeah. like they all say, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it. And you'll keep out of trouble, you'll keep on making money, and people will still respect you. Well, you have to, you got to keep in, into consideration that it's a lot easier to criticize and reject something or, or someone, depending on what they say or they do, than to actually de-listen to their and understand them for 30 minutes or more. And I've been reading a book called The Art of Communication, and... It's it's very it's a very great book to read. Hmm. 
Well, and I guess we have technically one more topic for tonight. Minus the listener contributions. But anyway, this big thing that's been going on around called Gamergate. Which took me a while to figure out what it was really about. And... Honestly, it, it, it even kind of goes back to one of our previous topics from a previous episode about the whole thing of females being in esports. And that's part of the gaming industry, but this goes all around the game industry. So it's whether you're a journalist or a video game developer or even a let's player and so this even includes Anita Sarkeesian who or Sarkeesian that's how Mr. Colbert pronounces it but anyway with her show Tropes and Woman I mean Tropes versus Woman <laughs> yeah but it, it's just this whole, like basically what Gamergate is, it's a movement of video game fans who are fighting to achieve something involving ethics and gaming journalism using reasonable, measured debate. And I guess its goal is to just co compromise and, and, and debate in just a particular manner. But I guess it kind of all started with this female indie developer, I can't remember exactly what her name is, but... Neither can I. She, she was involved with a relationship with this guy who apparently wrote a 600-page paper about something that just upset her. And what happened is she actually... Like, like I think he wrote the paper on how, on how bad something was that she was trying to show so when she fought back try you know trying to talk about you know this isn't this isn't true this is really really mean within minutes he posted all of her personal information and she was forced to contact authorities in order to get help and she eventually had to move out of her house because of the danger that that the fact that he posted her entire dress for the world to see. And that's kind of where it just went downhill from there. There are certain things in Gamergate that they don't necessarily agree with, but the fact that people are harassing women who are trying to show their perspective on something in a game that involves women possibly being objectified and this constant use of what looks like misogyny, people just don't want to hear it. They think that this person is a waste of time and isn't worth listening to and would rather just do away with the person as opposed to deeply listening what they're trying to say. They may not... Personally, I just want to play my games and enjoy them as they are. I don't focus on this stuff as much as I do when I play games because, let's be honest, I play as mostly a male character, but after I saw all of the opinions by women talking about video games, I start playing as female characters too. And one example is the Tomb Raider games. Another example is Beyond Good and Evil. And another example is, uh, well, there's Bayonetta, but that's just kind of, like, crazy. Anyway... I like my video games. I don't want people to harass women because they're trying to prove a point when they only a selected audience listens to them. Everybody else is saying, you know, this is this person is a is a waste of a life. She should not be talking about this. I'm going to harass her. No. No. That is not going to make things better. It's only going to make things worse. And I think what the thing is, is that these people are being influenced by other users. They are taught the wrong things about deep listening to what people have to say, 
and they just jump to conclusions. They don't listen. They criticize, they demonize, and they harass without truly understand, understanding who that person is, where they are coming from, and what point they are trying to make. They're oh, just ignorance. And um, the person that it all started with was Zoe Quinn. Zoe I Quinn. Guess yeah. they've decided to call the thing with her a Quinspiracy. But Haha. <laughs> we see some guys making points about the game industry or whatever and we don't see, and I'm not even sure if that's really much of a point because I hardly see many men making much of a point other than because men are treated very well in the game industry and for for some reason I feel like a lot of people's points of view is that the only people who should be involved in the gaming industry are heterosexual men. It's what it sounds to me like a lot of people think it should just be. Well, I think it was because of that that one thing that happened. You had Zoe Quinn, and then you had Felicia Day, and then Anita Sarkeesian, and it's just it's just a mess. Like there are sides that are who are harassing women. There are sides that aren't harassing with women. There are sides that say, you know what? I just want to play my game. I respect everybody's opinion, even though I don't agree with everything that they say. That's it. I'm kind of on that side. I respect everybody's opinion. I might not necessarily agree with everything they have to say, but I do not want to threaten people. I do not want to harass them, and I don't want to post their public information for the world so that they are more vulnerable to this world of technology. And our other article, which is pretty much part of this topic, is Chris Clue if that's how his last name is pronounced. And he writes this huge article on Medium about why he does not like gamer gators, which is because he feels like they are giving gamers a bad name. And this, so far, is the article that I've seen that's actually told me what I want to know about the Gamergate movement and the fact that the whole thing of it is pretty much just to harass women in the gaming industry. I mean, like with the Sarkeesian video, again, she's just making a point. If you don't like it, then and I feel like that's just another generic point, but it just rolls with really everything. I mean, what's the difference other than it's a female person doing this stuff? And like you said, if someone's gonna just assume stuff, you're not gonna figure out what the truth of it all is. And I think there was there was this video posted on Google, not Google Plus, maybe it was, anyway, by Wes Wilson about, which is this long video about the Gamergate stuff and the Sarkeesian, and it pretty much starts off with the whole thing of people only will know what they want to know and if something does not coincide with what they believe this thing to be then they will ignore it completely and bash the crap out of it. Although I guess there wasn't all this stuff about bashing it but sure as heck there is that to it. And when I'm thinking about this just some of the reasons in my mind are just so very generic but I think that's especially because I mean why do these women have to be treated 
as differently from men. I mean, they're people, they... I don't know. Yeah, it's it's basically... it's I'm speechless, and you're speechless, and you just wish things can just go a little more peacefully. There could be a lot more communication and deep listening between all these people, but it takes one guy and a whole bunch of false allegations upon one woman to cause the whole Gamergate community to just be on one side that harasses women. It just takes one person to do that. And it's a shame that somebody go to this level to spread these rumors and then cause a panic in when it comes to debating ethics and gaming and journalism. And I mean, I, I'm saying I mean far too many times, but what was I going to say now? I need to write this stuff down for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but even when you see stuff like that, which is so negative, people seem to just shed tears. And they'll go with it, and next thing they get to find out, what they're tearing over is untrue. And why the heck do they have to stick with that? That's something I don't really get. I mean, something might shock me at first, but when I learn about it some more, I at least consider it. I think people just, they just jump to conclusions too early. It's like, here's a, one of my, the boss of my workplace once told me this. He said, most of the people say blue when they are asked what color is the sky. But the thing is, is that why is the sky blue? What makes it blue? How does it, has it been blue this whole time? Like, what's, what's the significance? What's the connection? They just jump to things too fast, and that's kind of what happens on the news, is that you get these, you get all of these reports, unconfirmed reports, saying that you know, something tragic is happening, and all this information that is sent out too quickly results in it being a mess, like the Sandy Hook shooting, but that's another story. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's sad. It, it just makes me shake my head to the highest degree to the point where I just want to implode my face with my palms just I can't believe it's just happening now I'm trying to come up with something to say here and even just thinking about it I am quite speechless I mean you're you're going to base off all this stuff off of what one person says and there's no proof of it at all yes and then when other women do their own thing you're going to get at them for it just because you disagree with it and I think I'm finally on my roll here and then just you're going to ignore anything they say that you don't like, you don't even consider it, and you're going to issue all these threats against them. And I mean, there's even been, I am not sure if you said it, but the threats of security, because they've had to leave their home, so I guess he did say that. Yeah, and, and then there was there was the convention with her with Ania. She had to cancel one because of somebody threatened to go in and and actually shoot her. Yeah, so she and, had to reschedule that. Yeah, and I disagree with her one tweet. Well, the part of the, her tweet saying that the open carry laws are the reason why, and I think that if they're with their open carry laws, at least just, uh, I don't see what the problem is with 
having someone prepared for anything to happen in the moment they see a suspicious person neutralize them shoot them in the leg or foot it's like the Colorado shooting that happened 2012 yep if there were and that's a state that doesn't have open carry and so they could not stop him in time but if there was the open carry law, you could neutralize them. And you could save Anita's life and the convention, her speech, or whatever at the convention, could still go on. There's no reason why the open carry law would be interfering with this other than possibly mm -hmm. by fear, which is mm -hmm. of course what a lot of this stuff revolves around. But of course that fear comes out of ignorance and and any of this stuff so-called fear about the about woman taking over the industry or whatever you want to call it with how that they've been there's a bunch of stuff going around as well with um, spreading misogynist bullcrap and uh, that that's quote unquote misogynist bullcrap or what feminism and I mean are frick with the I means but are they not allowed to voice their opinion is it just because they're female but. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's it's discrimination. People who don't want to hear other people what they have to say, they're basically just ignorant. I mean, if someone is trying to tell me something, and I would listen to them. I would listen to them to understand them and just respect their decision. For for example, if I was hanging out with somebody and then they went up to me privately saying, I don't think we should hang out anymore – and then I'll say why, and then I'll deeply listen to them, and I say, okay, I understand. But people just aren't like that. There's so, there's some other, they're, they're, there's some... They're easily offended, I yeah, think, is but, just a point of it. Yeah, but they just, people just don't listen to what others have to say. They, they're not interested in what their minds have to say. I was actually interested what this NFL player had to say. He... Of course, he uses some of very extreme words that I've never even heard before. But he it shows that. I've, I've seen every single word that he's written here, and it's a very nice delivery. He's speaking his own mind about how much Gamergate has caused so much misogynistic behavior that it has become a problem when it comes to ethics and journalism. So... That's and, my two cents. And I guess I can work my point with that you don't see this stuff happening to the guys because he makes a point about Gamergate with that it's peeving him off to bl the blue moon, which does not exist. But, and he's not getting, he's not getting any crap for it. In fact, he's actually getting quite a, quite a bit of support. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, I'm going Ga to, gamers are not dead. If I keep on that's, saying, I mean. that's my, that's my thing. Gamers are not, PC gaming's not dead. Gamers are not dead. It's going to go on and on for a very, very long time to the point where I won't even be around. Yeah. I believe and my soul will travel to another person in the world, but I won't be around in this physical body. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, and I feel like you could sort of even compare this to the Nazi Germany stuff, because if you did not agree with their rules, you'd be in huge trouble. Yeah. And in the Gamergate stuff, if a woman even dares to make any sort of point about video games, especially if it's to do with misogyny 
or anything feministic, then you're going to get in a heck of a lot of trouble from these bigots. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's just sad. It's we criticize just all the time. Pessimistic stuff in the in the news in the world gets our attention because it's kind of what we actually feed off of when it comes to news and such like that. We try to focus on the good, but I guess people just aren't drawn to that kind of attention. And that's kind of how people drag us in when they when they upload uh, YouTube videos. They start out with the basic thumbnail to get our interest in. And then within 5 to 10 seconds of their video, they're supposed to grab our attention in. And then it's just constant stuff that is talked about through the rest of the video, which prevents us from wanting to click out and exit that video but this this is not YouTube this is this is ethics and journalism and I'm just disappointed that there are people like this who exist who want to lash out against another gender of somebody who is trying to make a supportive point slash argument involving some things like games and when people don't want to hear it they tend to just shun those people away not listen and some go to the point where they actually want to physically mentally and emotionally hurt them and that is unbearable mm -hmm. so that's all I'm going to say about that yeah and I tried to come up with something more other than I, I, I guess I can come up with something more to it. It just is so very scary because we have all these stubborn people that refuse to think or know any different from what they already do and their mindsets keep them in this shell of theirs that they just will not come out of. But. Yeah. I understand. I think it's about time. And before we get to it, we would like you listeners. We would like your input on this for the next shows. Should we be considering ourselves a debate podcast or a discussion podcast, which Thing and I have been debating ourselves. <laughs> and I mean, I feel like there is a good ring to debate which discussion lacks, but I feel like discussion is a perfect word for this sort of thing. But we will be getting to that in... Sing it with me. One, two, three, four. Let's... Uh, this... <laughs> okay, let's start um... now. Let's... On the count to... Three. Okay. One, two... Three, listener, listener comments. <laughs> this is hard because it's up. a delay. There's a delay. That's why it's hard. All right. All right. And go. Listener, listener contributions. Oh my. Listener contributions. Okay. Okay. I actually, that let's go. Listener's megaphone. I like that title better. Listener's megaphone. Okay. Okay. Listeners, Listeners make a phone. phone. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. So let's try this back to back. So I'll start with Halo Playa One. Hey there, JBJ and Thing. Got a question for both of you. What classic cartoon do you want to make a return or reboot today? Do you think it'll be crap? Or so be awesome as what we loved them for. Thanks, guys. Which one do you want to see come back? 
Well, um, there's actually quite a few cartoons that I actually want to see come back. Uh, one of them being Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I really, really enjoyed that cartoon, and it definitely defined me as who I am today because it's so random and crazy that it just makes me want to have more episodes. And it's kind of sad that the last episode, spoiler, if you don't want to listen, Mac and his mom and his brother end up leaving out of town so he can not go back to Madame Foster's house again to meet all of the imaginary friends. Uh, so there's that. There's also uh, Samurai Jack because there's never actually an episode where oh, he kills Aku. I think I remember that show yeah. for sure. So I, I think if it's... I don't know. Ca- cartoons aren't the same. So maybe they sh- should have just she sh- should have just stayed as they are because cartoons right now you have the amazing world of Gumball you have Adventure Time you have regular show they they just never really appealed to me I like the cartoons of the 90s more than I do like the cartoons now because I'm kind of getting old when it comes to cartoons and I'd rather start watching things on YouTube or stuff on Adult Swim you what about you Blaze for me. Well, one of them is actually coming back next year, but this time as, I believe, a a computer animated production, The Magic School Bus, but this time, 365. That's what it's called? Yep. 365? No, The Magic School Bus 365. No, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Yeah, that, that was a good cartoon as well. I never really... I lo- I always loved watching the end where the guy started answering questions. Good show, very educational. It's on Netflix. Yep, and the other one being Disney's Recess. Yeah, that was pretty good too. That just made a lot of memories. And it's I think what most kids miss from their playground in real life is having a king having all this craziness going on getting to wear hats and all this crazy wear in classrooms and maniacal kindergartens cool trust me I could have said savage but (laughs) keeping it light here you can read the next one all right, so this one was asked by the name of Moises the Monk for the podcast, and he asks, I hope it's a he, what epic rep battles would you like to see? Me, Buddha versus Budai. He says they're always being confused for being the same person, when totally they are not. He also has a quick shout-out to his brother, Royce, who is currently in the Army, hardworking man, great. It's nice for somebody to be serving our our country and um, yeah, the U.S. Army. Hopefully, I'm getting that right. If I'm getting it wrong, I'm sorry. Great, um, epic rap battles. Well, there have been a lot of epic rap battles out, and I think the one that we all remember and recall is Darth Vader versus Adolf Hitler, <laughs> <laughs> which oh, is the best. Is but if I were to movie. make one up. It would probably have to be, um, uh, how do I put this? I, I had one in my head, but I but I kind of forgot it. Um, Isaac Clark versus Master Chief would be one of my suggestions because I do I I I do love the Halo games, and I also liked Dead Space One, Two, and Three, despite Three being a little too actiony and not scary enough. So that would be cool. Another one that I would also like to see was to um would be here let's see <laughs> it's so tough it's really really tough to name these things off the top of my head but uh, I, I would have, have one you have tim one cook, right what is it tim cook versus satya nadella i don't know who those people are <laughs> Satya Nadella is the CEO of Microsoft, and Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. Oh. So rather than have it be Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, why not get the CEOs this time? 
Yeah, that would make more sense. That sounds pretty good. All right, next one. All right, so we have the Grinch. Well, just Grinch. Have y'all ever tried cooking? If so, what is your experience cooking an actual recipe? Did it turn out great or an utter failure? Thanks and much love. So far for me, it's just been eggs and grilled cheese, which I'm pretty sure I have simple recipes, and chicken noodle soup, which I've gotten help with before. But nothing really with much of a recipe. So, cool. and, and it turned out pretty good. Okay. All right, and as for myself, there was one day where I was with my dad and my brother, and we actually made uh, chicken marsala so we you know we did the whole thing where you put the pieces of chicken in the flour and you put them in there wait till the white edges are there and then flip them and then mix wine with ah oh, it's so good I gotta stop talking about it but that was good we also learned how to make grilled cheese like you said already um, most of the stuff that, that I know how to make is pretty much just microwavable, but I try to start cooking more often because I think I'm going to move to an apartment somewhere, so I have to learn how to cook before I do that. And the first time I, I cooked, it actually did turn out great, but I do believe that I need a lot more practice if I were to make a lot more uh, food recipes. So. All right, um, we're moving on to the next one. This one is by Super Mastodon. I've already s seen him before, and he says, Greetings, JBJ and Thing. Here's a question for you both. If you could make at least five fictional characters real and have them live in your house, who are the characters would you choose? Thanks, and keep the great show. Well, that is a very, very interesting question. I only There's had no wood in there, Super Mastodon. Yeah, um, I have no idea who I would pick to live in my house. That would probably be a nightmare because <laughs> all the time we would be looking at these these characters. Some of them are two D, some of them are three D. There's always an issue with a certain character when it comes to TV shows or games or movies. But if the five fictional characters have to be real, um, one would have to be um, the guy who Samuel Jackson plays from Pulp Fiction. Um, the other person would have to be... Um, oh, this is getting too hard. I'm speechless and I'm tired. I think I might as well just have Blue Regard, Q Kazoo is the other one. Um, I would have Samurai Jack as the third one. Um, my other character would be, um, Tom Cruise from War of the Worlds. And then I would have, uh, I'm running out of ideas, the, the Scottish man with the one leg from Samurai Jack in my house. He always loves that accent. <laughs> I always like his accent. His accent's funny. I Our... oh, sorry. Go, go on. No, I'm done. You're here. go. Well, I'd go for Harry Potter for sure. Okay. I was thinking John Coffee, but he's deceased by now. But I suppose if he was still alive, I'd get lucky. He's fictional, so why not? True. <laughs> And what else is there? There is also possibly Carrie. Don't mess with her. <laughs> and what else do we have here? Steve. And one more. Let's see. I think I might go for Lydia. From Skyrim. So let's get to this next one, which comes from Blessings from Above. Sup, bosses, Mike here. 
What do y'all think of YouTubers getting into what a lot of showbiz celebrities are doing, like their own movies, video games, books, etc.? Usually, the results are bullcrap. A controversy from a few months back is when Yogscast started up a Kickstarter campaign for their mobile game, but they cancelled it and never brought the money of the people back. I think this is a stupid gosh darn situation. And of course that is the clean version. They should just stay on making YouTube videos in my opinion. I hope you I hope you respect that. Thanks. And I think that that isn't a bad idea. And I mean, when celebrities do get into something else, for example, Leonardo, Leonardo <coughs> DiCaprio is doing his environment, environmentalism, which is poor in logic. He's an excellent actor, though. Or there's Stephen King making an essay, and I guess in a way... He's still good because it's part of his job anyway, because he's an author, but his point on gun control, although ironically he himself has a handgun or so, and I guess it depends on the extent of what they're getting into, other than their main career. And I mean, Brent Copeland from, formerly from the Dead Workers Party, he's had a successful Indiegogo campaign to start on this MMO he's wanted to make using the Hero Engine, and I have a f lot of faith in the guy that he will somehow pull it off. But what, what do you think? Well, I did read about this article. I think I maybe we briefly talked about it in a previous podcast. But do I... Th well, first of all, people have to start somewhere. And they have to gain an audience. And as that audience builds and builds, sometimes there might be people who say they want to try different things. So they either, they either try that, see if it goes well. In this case, it didn't. I don't think Yogg's cast was completely responsible for their failed Kickstarter campaign because I think they were being supported by some other company who actually failed to properly distribute the amount of money that was going toward this project. Do I think... What do I think? Well, celebrities who first start on YouTube and they, they make videos constantly for a certain audience, they should continue to do that. Unless they receive an enormous amount of feedback suggesting that they try something different to the point where they feel a little uncomfortable. But, you know, something that's new is always exciting. Then they should give it a shot and see how it is. But if they're not used to something right off the bat and they just, they're just put under so much pressure, then I guess they should just stick to what is mainstream for them instead of trying to do something new in a short period of time. All right, and All right. the next one. Next one. The next one is by Sensei, and he says, Hello, hello, BN crew. If you could add any characters, as many as you want, on Smash Brothers, who would you like to see? You know Goku would be awesome for the game, doing Kamehameha's all over the place. Peace. <laughs> I like how he ended peace. Well, there is, a, there is a lot of fan fiction that goes on in on the internet. Like, you can see photos of every single character's picture on there, but it's not real. However, on Super Smash Brothers, it would, would, it would be really nice if they could get some of the characters from PlayStation Battle Star Battle Royale All Stars to actually be in Super Smash Brothers, if possible. But it's Nintendo. 
I mean, when Nintendo first came out with the Super Smash Brothers game, that was the first game I ever played on N64, along with Super Mario 64. I think it should stay like that. But if I were to name any characters to go on Super Smash Brothers, it would have to be characters from the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale video game. And I don't know, I think the fact that he can do that many moves all over the place would be considered possibly cheating. So they should find a way to fix that if that ever happens. So what about you, Blaze? Let's go for Steve. He's not anything related to Nintendo or their products, but let's add products, but let's let's add Steve to Super Smash Brothers. Okay. And that's all I can really think of. Okay. So next up we have Grover Cleveland, whose last name represents a state that I was hoping to go on a, a city. field trip to. A city. Yeah. Which is the same name as a city in the U.S. that I had wanted to go to for a school trip, but I don't have enough money for it. But he says, yo, 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 good guy Grover here. Call me Trips G. Here's my question. If you could turn into an animal, what would you like to be? So original, right? Anyway, thanks and love the show. And I thank you for loving our show. And I would go for either a cat or a lion. All right. And if I could turn into an animal, it would be a vulture or a peregrine falcon. Because I heard that the peregrine falcon is the fastest bird to ever soar down. Like, over 100 miles per hour. It's pretty amazing. You should do some research on that. But that's what I would like to be. All right. All right, next one. This one is by Mitch. And he's it's talking about... advertising. <laughs> Mitch. Mitchell! Uh, you never get that. It's Mystery Science Theater reference. All right, uh-huh. he says, Got any upcoming JVG Blaze merch like T-shirts, mugs, stickers, and other stuff? Thanks, bruh, and I love me some more BN. Well, this is probably a question for you, Blaze, so I'm just going <laughs> to hand it off to you. Well, I have contacted the creator of this font called Black Flag, which I'd love to use in any merch. And so far, that's as far as I've gone with that, and... I have seen this one site which has this thing going on for if enough people um, basically pre-order a shirt and I know how much you hate that term pre-order but sort of kind of like that and if enough people sign up for it then the product is a go-go and Maybe I'll see if that'll work out, and if not, then I guess that's what happens. And I wish that could have been more about you thing, because I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Jawi, who says, hey everybody, it's ya boy Jawi. <laughs> yes, I know that already. I got a sort of weird question to ask. If you can pass a silly law in your country, what would it be? Want some examples? I got y'all some. Free cheeseburgers every Friday. All citizens must hold toothbrushes during midnight. Nice. All people must have YouTube accounts, etc. Thanks and love from Hawaii. Hawaii? That's pretty cool. Wow. (laughs) That sounds like a pretty communist state to me, (laughs) which I'm hugely against. (laughs) Okay, I'll do it this way. Every single person who plays video games must have 
a Minecraft account. That's as far as I'm gonna go with that. And... I passed that law already. As Way with... back in its alpha stage. Oh yeah. As uh, yeah. with anything else, it's not a ridiculous law, but I'd say drop gun control and drop copyright laws. It's not silly, <laughs> it's logical, but it's something I definitely want to see. How about you? All right. Um, well, if I were to pass a silly law in my country, it would require... Um, uh, now I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a silly law, huh? Well, I guess if I were to make a law... It would have to involve something along the lines of probably saying hello to every person that you pass by. Unless it's a really, really busy city such as Manhattan or New York City or anywhere where it's just 24-7 without the lights. Because you got the people who mask their emotions and they don't have time to talk to people because they're on a really, really tight schedule. But if I were to make a silly law, it would be respect for self, respect for others. But that doesn't sound silly. A and silly would be you could walk, you could walk around with. How about this? I'm gonna pass a law where you have, if you are a United States citizen, you have to walk around with a permanent tattoo of the American flag on your forehead. Oh goodness. That would that would be my silly law, and. Yeah, that's that's it. But I have to say that his your suggestions, Joey, are, are really hilarious, and we thank you a lot for uh, your examples. That's <laughs> and, all I got. And actually, on the note of being respectful to others, that gave me the craziest idea: is that for people, if you are going to make an insulting comment to another person on the internet you must find some way later to contact them in person and tell them what you think about them oh to i like their that. face oh <laughs> well Ch i, I well. was thinking phone call or to their face but Either or. Face cam. Oh, Just yeah. Some sort of a webcam. Yeah, that might work. Tell so. what you think about them to their face and see where you go from there. Might yeah. bring Sounds good. something not so good. All right. But, yeah. uh, next one comes from somebody named Mr. Oyster Sauce. Nice name. He says, or asks, have you ever seen your... Have you ever seen... A very weird thing being sold on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, or whatever online shopping site. He says, I've seen stuff like selling their pair of used rain boots or signed condoms, but I bet they're much more weirder than that. Like the kid who tried to sell his own grandmother for $13,000. Thanks and happy gaming. Well, that one was kind of weird, but here is what I think is weird. So I shared this with a, a couple of my coworkers. The things that I came across are these. Ready? Bacon-flavored condoms. Giant edible teddy bears, like gummy bears. And giant sour gummy worms. Which is weird, because I never usually see that kind of stuff on Amazon or Craigslist, but I did. And... That's that's pretty much all I have. Um, what about you, Blaze? I think the weirdest thing that I've seen, apart from the grammatical error, which is should be much weirder, is that. And yes, I am being a grammar Nazi today. I kind of hi, a grammar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Nazi. Don't worry. But I think the weirdest things I've seen, other than Stuff being priced super high 
are things like just tickets to conventions and the sorts that hmm. are likely to be illegitimate. And as far as that goes, I really haven't seen anything crazy. But imagine that bacon-flavored condom. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is. It's for the it's for the older teenagers. I'm pretty sure there are other. Kids I don't think that's for anyone who's I don't not think, messed up in not. the mind. No, it's not. I don't think it should be for anybody. That's that's just gross. I mean, I've had bacon flavored mint. I thought those were bad, but condoms. Ugh. Apparently, that's there's weird. bacon flavored beer or wine or something like that. Yep. Beer, I yep. think. And mints. And, and lastly, we have Cusco's Balangos. Or Balungos. Balungos or something. Cusco's Balungos. There you there go. There we go. Hey, uh, Blaze on Asian peeps. I have a cool suggestion for you guys there. Why not have a segment <laughs> featuring a top five or top ten of something? Like the top five places you recommend when going to this place or the top five games you've played this weekend or something. Countdown lists are pretty cool and would be awesome if you add this short segment into your show to add a little bit more variety. Thanks and KB signing out. Well, me personally, I'd rather have this show be more about opinion of mostly controversial matters. And I'm not exactly sure that that would keep up with that sort of thing. Although I suppose if maybe... Maybe we needed more content in an episode, but... I'm not sure that... I, I mean, this episode, we sort of headed into that sort of crisis, and thanks to you thing, we had enough content, because I completely forgot about the Gamergate stuff. But... I think for the formula, at least that I'm looking for the show, I'm not exactly sure it would very well fit. And I mean, we already have the listener megaphone going on and that kind of that we just invented topic a bit. today <laughs> well and i originally had this in my head but i could never actually do it because we never had any submissions and only as of last episode we got submissions but Thank you all for your support. And Wait, I have something to say. Oh, I didn't get the, sorry. I didn't get my. <laughs> it's all right. Um. So so yeah, like like Blaze said. I mean, most of the time we just have our little sidewalk talk before what what has been going on during the week. If I have something to say, I'll just say the things that I well. For example, I previously said before he ran the sidewalk <laughs> talk segment. Oh. I, I do list anything that's interesting that has happened for me for the month. Like I said, Alien Isolation, Borderlands, Evil Within. Just games that I've been currently been playing during the month, and I'll currently briefly mention them. But like, but like I said, we only talk about stuff that seems to be more controversial and more stuff that's happening currently in the news while giving our opinions and whether we agree or disagree, but that's just debates... I don't know. We'll figure out a formula, but yes, we would like to add this segment, but we are still not exactly sure that's going to work. But we appreciate your suggestion and your comment for the show. Now you may close out. Thank you. But yeah, we thank you all for your submissions. And I mean, when I was just feeling a bit down, saying referred me to our responses and... My mind was just blown. And that's because of you guys. Yous are the re yous are part of the reason we do this. And when I get down, that's because I see numbers. But when I see... And if faces isn't really the best word for it. Because I don't see your faces. But 
I see your names, and I see what you have to say about the show, and it makes me feel good, and like our show actually means something. So I thank you a lot for that, and let's get this thing closed up now. So, we thank you all for tuning in, who's ever tuned in, wherever it is. All the referral links and crap will be in the show notes. And we were going to again do this on hitbox.tv slash jbjblaze. We might try that another time, but that's when there is more time to try it out. But for now, twitch.tv slash jbjblaze, and hopefully sometime or another I can get more written posts done up. And also, and I forgot to mention this during Sidewalk Talk, but yesterday, this game that I've been working on, but has been on hiatus since last March, and went on the service before they added the hundred dollar registration fee. Aftermath, a post apocalyptic based game, is now greenlit. And I thank the Steam community for all their support. It means a great lot to me. That's great. That it, it means a huge lot to me that people still are interested and it's like the show. It means a lot that yous are still interested in this show. And I mean, sometimes I get the thought of, what's the point of doing this, when really to a podcast you kind of need listeners, especially with the listener's megaphone, and I mean, it's just really not as fulfilling as if you don't have listeners. But thank you all very much. Hopefully we can do another show next month and things will go very well. And hopefully there's no audio issues with this episode. And I thank you, Mr. Brent Copeland, again for talking about, well, for answering my question on an episode of Morning Coffee, which might have solved our problem, which was in Skype, where the auto adjust was turned on for the volumes. But anyway, any last words, Thang? No, just, that's, that's, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. Don't do drugs. There's no place like home, etc. Just be smart, be mindful, be spiritual. Listen to people, listen to what they have to say. Don't believe, always believe what's in the news. And just take everything nice and slow and try to understand when things happen. Get all the facts first before you start making accusations. And, that's what, oh, sorry. No, that's it. No, that's it. Go <laughs> I, I swear, whenever I interrupt you, that's it. Okay, but if you want to support other stuff that I do, you can also go to patreon.com slash jbjblaze. I'm still contemplating having something else being campaigned there rather than my music, but I'm still willing to keep that going. You can follow the show at... Blaze on Asian on Twitter. You can follow me at JBJ Blaze on Twitter. And where can they follow you on Twitter? At the thing 2010. Just the and then thing and then the number 2010. And you can also use that same alias to find me on Steam. And I'm usually online uh, mostly during the evenings and weekends because I have a 9 to 5 job and I'm always busy. I'm a busy man. So. That's it for me. And let's round up this birthday show. And good night to you all, and hope you all had a wonderful Halloween. 
And... Yep, oh. Yeah, go on. And eat lots of candy. Just make sure you brush your teeth afterwards. All right. And... What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonnation.tk for more articles and show notes, to flippinawesome.engine.com slash bnp for show notes, and check out the show on Stitcher at bit.ly slash bnp stitcher. Have a good night, everybody! Thank you for throwing me off my game, Mom! I'm doing a show right now! That was so worth it. <laughs> <laughs>